what's up youtube it is your boy jb and we are here today with some hot topics you guys so these are going to be the week's hottest topics for the week of december the 19th through december the 24th you guys can you believe it you guys that 2021 is literally almost over you guys so like i said these are the week's hottest topics for the week of the 19th through the 24th and with that out of the way you guys before we get into the re this um hot topics video if you guys are watching this or any other video on the channel and are not yet subscribed to the channel then i'm gonna need you guys to do me a solid favor and stop taking me out on this date and having me pay for it at the end of it like the video you guys leave your comments like your video leave your comments subscribe to the channel turn your notifications on you guys so you guys are notified when i drop anything else and with that out of the way now let us discuss the hot topics so let me tell you guys how this is going to work I don't know what's going to be up first, if Hot Topics will be up first or if Real Housewives of Miami is going to be up first. But those are going to be the only two videos you guys get today. And then after that, we're off nothing on Saturday and Sunday. There's no Salt Lake City Housewives. And the season finale of Insecure is Sunday. But I won't do those until Monday as well as Claws. So let's go ahead and discuss what is hot and what is trending this week, shall we? All right, you guys, so the first story that we're going to talk about is we're going to we're going to give um, a little, you know, shout out and some congratulations to Sheree Zambino. Right. So if you guys are not familiar with Sheree, Sheree had a she was on the VH1 show Hollywood Exes. She's also the first wife of Will Smith. Right. So they have their son Trey together. Right. So, like I said, Sheree was on Hollywood Exes. I don't know how many seasons there was of Hollywood X's because honestly, I never watched Hollywood X's. I didn't get into that. Sh I never watched Hollywood X's. What I did watch was the Atlanta X's. That was the only show. That was the only one that I watched. I didn't watch the Hollywood. So I can't tell you anything about the women of Hollywood X's because I just didn't watch it. But she was on there, I believe, from season one until they ended the show. Right. And I know last year in 2020, they did a reunion show with them where Jeannie Mai had hosted it, right? So, Cherie will be joining Real Housewives of Beverly Hills. She'll be a friend of this season, right? So, Real Housewives of Beverly Hills, they are currently filming season 12. I believe that they might be in postseason right now because I know that the ladies have been showing, you know, pictures of themselves in their green screens. I saw one of Erica. I saw one of Renna. I saw one of, uh, I saw Erica, Renna, and Sutton. Those are the three that I've saw. And I saw the new girl that would be a full-time housewife, right? Wow. So, and then speaking of that, we have a new full-time housewife. So Kathy is returning as a friend of the housewives as well as um, Cherie. She will be a friend of the housewives. And I've wanted Cherie on Beverly Hills since the first season Garcelle was on season 10. I wanted her to be a friend, especially in that first episode we saw Cherie. I was like, yeah, Cherie needs to come on and be a friend, a, a housewife or a friend of, right? So Cherie has now officially joined the Real Housewives of Beverly Hills. Now, like I said, she's not going to be a main cast member, so she is going to be a friend of, right? So we will see her probably in the same capacity that we saw Kathy Hilton, right? Probably more, probably a lot more than what we saw Kathy Hilton, right? We'll, we'll probably see her a lot less than Kathy. Because Kathy was always around, even though she wasn't a main diamond holder, right? So, like I said, season 12 is currently filming. So, we have the same women back from season 12, from season 11 to season 12, with one new um, housewife. So, would that be eight housewives that we'll have? Because we have Kyle, we have Renna, we have Erica, we have Sutton, we have Garcelle, we have Crystal, and we have Dorit, right? We have those seven housewives. This is the reason why I had to re-record this video because for the life of me in the first video that I recorded, I could never remember all the housewives that we had this season and I, and I kept forgetting Sutton. But yeah, so we have, though, we have those seven plus this new lady. So we'll have eight housewives. Is this going to be a first? Is this going to be a first? And you know, something that I, I wish that Bravo would do, kind of like what they're doing with the Real Housewives of Miami. If you guys are not watching the Real Housewives of Miami on Peacock, you guys really should. It's actually really good and, and it's interesting, right? Because the friends of on Real Housewives of Miami, they get as much screen time as the actual housewives do, right? 
They're not like what Marlo usually is. You know, Marlo usually just comes around for the friends. I mean, even with these ladies on Miami, they come around for friend events because Marisol is a friend up and so is Adriana. But we see Marisol, Marisol in so many scenes. We see her in scenes with Alexia. Like we see her a lot, which I'll talk about that in the review. And we see Adriana a lot with new cast member Julia. So it's really interesting, you guys. But let me know what you guys think about Cherie joining the Real Housewives of Beverly Hills. I know for I know for a long time now people have been saying that they want Garcelle to have a you know a friend on the show right because sudden is just not enough. Now you guys know I don't see it for sudden, but going into season twelve, like I, I think with a lot of these house do you see with Housewives this season coming up right? I think a lot of them I'm gonna give I'm gonna go in with a different I'm going with a clean slate right? Like with sudden season twelve, I'm gonna I'm gonna give sudden a different I'm gonna give sudden a chance season twelve. And even with Kenya on Real Housewives of Atlanta season, what season are we on? Fourteen. With Kenya, I'm gonna give Kenya a new. I'm gonna, I'm gonna give Kenya a clean slate. I'm gonna give Kenya a clean slate. Since Porsche's not there, I'm just gonna be like, you know what? Porsche's not there, so I don't have to feel like you know. But my, I mean, I just thought Kenya. And you know, I y'all know, I don't see it for Kenya for her antics. But I'm gonna go into you know season fourteen of Atlanta with a clean slate with Kenya. So let's move on, you guys. All right, guys, so next up, let's discuss Ms. Rona or Viomarion or is it Omicron? The new variant that's out, right? So you guys know that currently there's an uptick in the COVID cases, right? Now, I do know that they've said that the this new variant, the, the you know, it's got a it's got it's a little a little bit milder than what the what was the last one? The Delta variant, right? I know that they say it's a little bit milder, but I still want you, you know, but I mean, we're in the winter months and we know that we, when, like even last year, they were telling us be safe when you go, when, you know, when it comes to the Thanksgiving and Christmas, right? That, you know, with the cold, when, with the cold weather, it can make it go up. Now I will say though, here in Texas, it's not cold. It is not cold here today. It is really I mean, it's hot as hell already. I don't even know what the temperature is. Like, it is hot outside. It's not like exponentially hot, but it's it's hot, right? But I want you guys, my people, I want you guys to be safe out there, you guys. I know a lot. Like, I went to I went to the mall yesterday in Dallas. I went to the um, Galleria, not far from where my old apartment is, and the stores now they're they're going back to how things were, you know. A year ago before they you know they got a little bit lax on the protocols right because now because i went to the apple store to pick some stuff up right and when i went to the apple store a few weeks ago just a few weeks ago you could just walk into the apple store just freely right you can walk into the store if you want to wear a mask you could if you didn't you didn't have to right but now they have a line so they have one line where you go to pick up your online orders they have one line where you go in for walk-ins or appointments, right? And you have to wear a mask. And it's kind of the same with all the stores in um in the mall. You have to they they're requiring masks once again, right? But yeah, you guys be safe out there. Remember, as I always say, you guys, and I'm gonna say it again at the end of the video, wash your hands, you guys. Wear wear your mask. Wear your mask. Wear your mask. And socially distance, you guys, and we are gonna be fine. We're gonna be good, right? We'll we'll get through this, you guys. Now, since I'm still talking about, since I'm talking about the, you know, Omarion, right? Did you guys see in that interview that that Coon CO, whose name I never say on this channel? Did y'all see her do her interview with you know who? Y'all know who you know who is, Chester Cheeto. So she was doing an interview with him, right? And you guys know that the Republicans they love downplaying this virus they love to i mean they love to downplay especially over there on fox news right they love to downplay the um the vaccines right yeah <laughs> in his interview with her ceo you know who was talking about the vaccine and you guys know he has the vaccine right and you guys know even when he got COVID last year you guys know he 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 had access to things that regular, ordinary people don't have access to, right? Those drug protocol, those protocols, right? 
but he's vaccinated, right? I don't know if he got the booster shot. Speaking of the booster shot, I need to sign up to get my booster shot. I actually need to find my, I think I have my vaccine card. Where's my vaccine card at? Ah, oh, damn, where is my vaccine card? I know, it's, oh, here it is right here. So yeah, I need to sign up to go get my booster shot. There's my vaccine card, you guys. There's my vaccine card. See? Does that have, does that have pertinent information on there about me? Now it just tells you my first and last name. But yeah, so he was talking to her about the vaccine. Now, like, like, like I was, about, like I was saying, you guys know that some Republicans and the Fox News pundits, they love to just downplay the the vaccine. They want to say, oh, when you get the vaccine, you can still, you still get sick. That's the same with any vaccine. Like, if you get the flu shot, right, you still have a chance of getting the flu. Like, just because you get the flu shot doesn't mean you can and cannot get the flu shot. What it means is if you get the flu, you'll have mild symptoms. And trust me, the symptoms of the flu are death-like, right? Because I've had the flu before. I had the flu in 2016 when I was work. I think I've said this to you guys before. I had the flu when I worked at Hertz rental car, right? Someone came into my location, was sick, right? I didn't know. And people just come, and, and it, 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 it's mind blowing and it's baffling that people will literally put another person's health and life at risk. Like literally, because I didn't know, I knew I was sick, right? I knew, I knew for a fact that I was sick because I went to work that morning and I had the chills and I told my boss, I was like, you know, I don't really feel good. Now my boss was a nutcase. And she was like, well, I need you to, I need you here today. I'm like, I don't feel good. And she was like, well, can you stay until someone? I'm like, I don't feel good. Where the was, she thought I was, she thought I was, I was, I was faking. She thought I was faking the entire time. So then my, my area manager came over and she was like, um, Gerald, she asked me, she was like, and she was like, you know, I, I, she said, I can look at you until you're not, you're, you're sick, right? And she says, can you give me 30 minutes maybe so I can just get someone over here to relieve you? And I said, I can try it. And we didn't, I didn't even last 30 minutes. She's like, okay, she, cause she looked at me. And at that point I started having chills and she was like, oh, she's like, you gotta go. She's like, you can go. She's like, I see you're getting worse. She says, so go ahead and go home, right? So I went home, I went to sleep. I woke up in a puddle of sweat. I took my temperature. My temperature was 100, it was 105, 105, that is not normal. So then I was like, I took some Tylenol and I was like, okay, let's see if it'll break. And I went back to sleep, woke back up, kept spiking. So I was like, oh, okay, it's time for me to go to the hospital. Got to the ER. They told me I had a, they told me I had the flu. They had to keep me there for about an hour to an hour and a half just so that temper, so that my fever could break, because it was not breaking. Because even when they gave me some medication, it spiked. So yeah, just because you get the flu shot, just because you get the COVID vaccine, the booster shot, any of these shots that we, like even when we were kids, right? Like you get the hepatitis, you get hepatitis A and B, you get the measles, you get the mumps, like you get all those shots. It doesn't mean that you won't get it. It just protects you in case you, it, it, it's, it's one to protect you from getting it, but if you do end up getting it, you don't have a severe case. You have a mild case that is manageable. So it's just interesting when you hear these Republicans talk about it, but you know who was like, he, he was talking to CO. He kept saying to her, the vaccine works. He says the people aren't, people aren't dying when they take it. And he says, it's very good. He says that, you know, the results are good. And when you take the vaccine, you're protected when you take it. And I was like, oh, and you looked up, you could just see her face. Her face was just cracked and molded. I'm like, exactly. You guys keep peddling these damn lies. Like you guys are, and it's so interesting, right? So they, because um, it's, it's really interesting the way that these Republicans love to, you know, just downplay every single thing, right? As if you know who was such, like so great and so grand and so perfect, right? He wasn't. He's a human. He was flawed, and Joe Biden is a flawed person, right? 
Joe Biden is not perfect. Like I go to the, there's this gas station that I go to, right? And they put stickers on on the gas pumps, right? And the stickers point toward the um the prices of the gas with Joe Biden's face saying, I did that. It's like, are y'all that stupid? Like I see people with these, you know, who flags 2024. It's just a lot of stupid shit that I be seeing. Um, but hey. So now that you know who has said that you're protected, the results are good. You know, people, the people who are dying aren't the ones who got the vaccine. I wonder what they're going to come up with next, because there's nothing you can say, because your illustrious leader has said He's, he spoke positively about it. Your illustrious leader has the vaccine. And like I was just saying a few minutes ago, even these Fox News pundits, you guys do realize that these Fox News people do have the va- they get the vaccine. They just come on camera and spew that nonsense. But hey, it's, that ain't my fight and I'm not going to even go any deeper into it. But we're going to go ahead and move forward, you guys. All right, you guys, next up, let's talk about Steph and Aisha Curry, you guys. So, have you guys heard the latest news about Steph and Aisha Curry? And I want you guys to weigh in on it and let me know if you guys believe it or if you guys don't believe it. And we'll definitely discuss it in the comments below. So, you guys, so the latest, and I'm going to say gossip because it's, it's, it's gossip, it's hearsay. No one knows for sure if it's true. And if it's true... I bet you Steph and Aisha got somebody. I bet you if it's true that NDAs are are all, all around. So the news. So it, allegedly Steph and Aisha Curry have an open relationship with each other. Right. Where I guess maybe he if he wants to be with someone else, he's with someone else. And if she wants to, vice versa. They're in, and so. I don't. Well, I mean, open poly, whichever one you guys want to call it. Right. Let me know, do you guys believe that in the comment section? Now, I know that, you know, Steph and Aisha have this brand, right? Where, you know, they were virgins until they got married. You know, they they're Chris, they had their Christian values and whatnot, right? But we got to take into account what is going on with Steph's mom and dad, right? You know, they're going through their divorce. Steph's mom is with her boyfriend from high from college that she was going with when she was, you know, she was seeing. So it's a lot to unpack, right? But that has, and and I say, and I say that, but that actually has nothing to do with Steph and Aisha, right? It has absolutely nothing to do with them in the, in the slightest bit, but I can see it, right? I mean, what, you know, in this day and age, people don't go for the traditional marriages, right? People have their, you know, their ideas of what works in their marriage, right? People can do things and be like, hey, let's do this to spice things up in a relationship so that way we don't get stagnant or stale, you know? So it is what it is. I want to know from you guys, do you guys believe in an open relationship or even a poly relationship? I want to know what you guys think about that, you know, and I'm one of those people that say whatever works for you works for you and it might not work for other people, right? The one thing that I don't like when it comes to an open, open relationship or, well, really the open relationships, right? And especially when it comes to a man and a woman, I always feel like when it comes to a man and a woman in an open relationship, it's always something that a man came to the woman with saying, because, you know, well, you know, I don't want to cheat on you. So why don't we just bring another woman into the bedroom? I always get those vibes, right? For me, I would be like if if we if I were if I was to say an open relationship, it would be open on all parties, right? You know, if the man wants to have another, you know, bring another woman into the bedroom, and the wife is okay with that, let's do that. But also, if the wife says, "Hey, if we gonna have open marriage, and you want to have another woman come into our bedroom," well, I also want to have another man come into the bedroom. But, you know, so many men have this fragile masculinity and these fragile egos that they can't take. Send another man with their woman. Now, I do see occasions where there are men that are OK with that. You know, there are men that are OK with sending their women, woman with another man. They, they're they securing themselves and they're securing their relationship and they're securing their, their, their manhood and everything that they're OK with that. And I respect that. I can respect that. 
I just I just don't like it when it's just one side and it's selfish. It's just the man. He's just he's he's basically getting he has his cake and he's eating it too. You know, like kind of like what let's talk about Martel Ho, right? Martel would have kept you know sleeping with Arian if Melody would have been okay with. Why did I put an air quote for Melody? He would have been still been with Arian if Melody would have been okay with it, but Melody was not okay with it, and that's what I mean about selfishness, right? The man does it because he just one because he feels like I'm man, I can do whatever, right? And but like I said, if the roles and and actually speaking of Martel, look at how Martel acts about the fact that Mel was on a date with another man. He when he brought up at the reunion that Mel slept with another man, his ego and his masculinity is so fragile that he could not stomach the idea that another man was with his wife or ex-wife, right? He couldn't stomach that. But a man that is securing himself would be like, oh, okay. And that's what I say. Poly relationships, open relationships, I feel like it should be open on all sides. Not just one. Not just one side. It shouldn't be one-sided, right? Because in special, let's just, let's just unpack this as well, right? When it comes down to a woman, right? Just because, the, I mean, so a man says, oh, let's have an open relationship and bring another woman into the relationship. Sometimes I feel like that could be forcing a woman into doing something that she might not necessarily want to do. She might not be into women, but because she wants to keep her man around and happy and satisfied, She'll go along with doing stuff like that just to appease the man, which ain't right. It ain't right. I prefer to be everyone's consenting choice, right? Let's bring it to the table. Let's have an open relationship. I want to bring another woman into the bedroom. Hey, do you want to bring, do you, are you okay with bringing another, are you okay with bringing another woman to the race relationship, right? If she says no, leave it at that. And if she says yes, cool. And then you also ask, what would you like? Would you, are, would you like it to just strictly be between me, you, and another woman? Or would you like it to be me, you, another man? Or would you like it, like, ask the questions, right? Like, ask the questions. I don't know, I'm, I'm going off on a tangent, but it's just consent. I'm all about consent. That's my thing. Hell, the woman might be like, shit. I don't want you involved with me and another woman. I want to be with the woman, right? Because you do see instances of that, right? But yeah, it's all about consent. And like I was just saying earlier with Steph and Aisha, if this is in fact true, I'm pretty positive there are NDAs out the asshole for this shit to protect themselves. All right, you guys. So let's move on to the next topic. All right, you guys, so let's talk about Baby Blue from Pretty Ricky and Love & Hip Hop Miami fame, right? So you guys remember last year that he did those did, did those PPP loans, right? And he got caught up in it. You know, I thought about doing the PPP loan last year, right? Because I do have a business. I do have, like, I have YouTube. I have Uber. So I do have legit businesses that I could have done, but, um... My ass is one. My ass is a little too scary to, to try even to try even do some shit like that, right? Then when I, cause I, cause I, I, cause there was a commercial on YouTube. I was like, hmm. So I guess I could do it. And I actually went through the process, and they told me how much money I could have gotten from the loan, right? And I could have got a good, I could have gotten a good portion of money from that loan. But then I thought, and I had to think to myself, like, ugh. Do you want to do this? Because I'm like, you don't look good. And I'm like, I don't look, I don't want to put on no prison jumpsuit. So I was like, eh. cause I hadn't, I did this in February. Right. And I, I looked into it and I, I thought about it and I prayed on it. And I'm like, God, should I do this? And I was like, should I do this? And I, and I ultimately said to myself, absolutely. You are not going to do this. Like I was like, I just cannot, I cannot, I cannot. Now I do know some people who did the PPP loans and, um, Y'all should be a little antsy and a little, a little weary. And the funny thing about the PPP loans is, especially for people, because I know people who did it that were on government assistance. Y'all fucked up y'all government assistance. Like, you know, some people were on housing. Some people were on food stamps, welfare. 
And y'all fucked yourself up with that. Like, a lot of people fucked themselves up with that. And I was like, ooh. I might have, and I needed, you know, because actually, when the PPP loans first started with Uber, I hadn't, I had not, I stopped driving Uber. I stopped driving Uber last year. When did I stop? I stopped, I stopped a week, I literally stopped driving Uber last year, the week before the shutdown came, right? That was when I stopped. Because I stopped a week prior. And I just worked my regular job. And it was... Ooh. Times were hard after that, right? It was difficult for me. Because I lost a good chunk of income. A good chunk of income. Because with my regular job, I was bringing home... Mmm. How much was I bringing home for my regular job? Before taxes, I was bringing home. Before taxes, it was about fifteen hundred, fourteen to fifteen hundred, every two weeks, right? And then after taxes, you know how taxes kick in, right? So I was bringing home maybe eleven to twelve hundred, maybe. But then with my Uber income, that's every week, right? So with Uber, I make anywhere between. Six and seven hundred dollars a week, right? So my I, so I was paying everything ahead of time. I like I, my car note. My car note was always paid early. My car insurance, I was ahead of that, and then I always had money. So if I was so, even on the weeks that we didn't get paid, I still had money. But then once I cut back on doing Uber, I was like, oh shit! I'm like, how how do people? I'm like. After I cut back, I'm like, damn, how the fuck do people just live off of a one pay? Like, oh my God, it was just one paycheck and every two weeks, I'm like, oh Jesus. So it got to the point where I'm like, I'm having to push my, I'm having, I was having to push my car note. I'm like, ooh, you got to pay your car note literally the day it's due. Because I had, at, at one point, actually what happened was I was just, I had my car, I had my, my credit union. I would just let my credit union just, you know, I would have them, I set it up for auto pay because I kill the money going to be there. So I'm like, I'm not worried about it. But then after that happened, I'm like, oh, shit, the auto pay got to go. Like I had to take I had auto pay on my car insurance and my car note. And I was like, oh, shit, the auto pay got to go because I'm like, I can't do it. I'm like, I make enough money to cover these bills. But I'm like, I have subsequently lost some of my income. So I'm like. We got to cut. It's got, it's it's a wrap. It's a wrap on that, right? So, yeah, I thought about doing the PPP loan, but something told me just not to do it, right? Now, Baby Blue, like I said, he did the PPP loan, right? He got caught up in that, in that wave of people who were, you know, caught up by the feds, right? My cousin showed me last year, this woman who bought a house down there in Houston, bought two houses, right? Two houses. And it's just the interesting thing. Like, why would you get these these big ass loans and go frivolously spend your money? That ain't smart. <laughs> like y'all going out and buying houses, cars, and and all this shit. And I'm just like, that makes absolutely no sense. Like, if I were to get a big big loan from the PPP loan, the only thing I would have done, I would have paid off my student loans. That would have been the only thing that I did. I would have paid my student loans off, right? Would have paid my student loans off, and I probably would have saved. I, what I would have done is I would have kept. I would have put some money into a savings account or one of my other checking accounts, and just let it sit there. Don't touch that shit, and continue to work and do what I do, and and just do me right, and then probably save up some. Try to save up some money so I could build my own house. I wouldn't have went out and bought a house. I would have built my own house, right? And because that's still what I want to do now. I want to build my own house, and you know, but yeah, it just wouldn't have been me. But yeah, so Baby Blue, he got caught up in that, you know, like Carly Red's husband got caught up in that. I think Carly's husband, ex-husband, got nine years in prison. Well, Baby Blue, he was just sentenced this week, and he got twenty months in prison. So he's going to be in prison a little shy of two years, right? 
damn. So yeah, if anybody was out there that did that PPP loan, y'all and y'all do realize tax season is coming right right around. Tax season is right around the corner. So what y'all gonna do when y'all have to file them taxes? Mm. I'm gonna pray for y'all who did them PPP loans. I'm gonna literally pray for you and pray that God works it out for you. I'm gonna pray for you. I'm gonna pray for you. Yep, I am. All right, guys. So let's move on and talk about the next story. All right, guys, so the next story up is going to be about Megan Good and her soon-to-be ex-husband, Devon Franklin, right? So earlier this week, it came out that Devon Franklin had filed for, Meg- filed for divorce from Megan Good after nine years of marriage, you guys. And I was like, damn, the week of Christmas. So it's like Devon was sitting there thinking like, hmm, what can I get my lovely wife Megan for Christmas? I got it. Let me give her a divorce. Baby, I hope he ain't in the house with her. I hope he don't have Christmas with her. I hope they don't celebrate nothing together. And I hope if they do, I hope he I hope he tells her, baby, ex-baby, cater the food. Because you might try to poison me. And I don't need that. Now, nah, I'm just I don't think I think that, you know, they both put out joint statements about, you know, that they're they're in, you know, they are still good with each other. Uh like you, I mean, you literally filed for divorce just before, just shy of Christmas. <laughs> oh, uh. now with making good and Devon, you know, when they first got married, and wasn't Devon on that show on We TV years ago, The Preachers of L.A. or something like that? Was he on that show, you guys? I I watched that show here and there, so I don't really know all the passages that was on there. But let me know in the comment section, was he on that show? But when Megan and Devon got married, I was like, hmm, how is this relationship going to work out, right? Because we know how we know we know the roles that Megan Good has taken, right? The My favorite movie with, that she's in is Waist Deep with Tyrese. Bitch, what you looking at? Like, that is my favorite movie. But we know Megan takes, you know, the more sexy roles, right? And honestly, over the last few years, I haven't really saw Megan good in movies that as as much as we had before so it kind of to me looking at it, it's like damn did you take a back seat to him now I know she's in the new television show on Har on 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 net no, not Netflix but um Amazon Prime Harlem right I have yet to watch that show I'm eventually gonna watch it <clears throat> but I was just looking like so she, and I was thinking when she got married to him I'm like, Megan is probably going to have to dial back who she is a little bit for those judgmental ass people in the church, right? And, you know, it wasn't even about the, it's, you know, the role she takes and her personal style, right? I'm like, she's going to have to switch up who she is just a little bit in order to fit into this first lady role, right? which you guys know how I feel about the church, right? I definitely feel that the church is very judgmental, right? They judge any little thing that you do, right? And I just don't understand it. I don't agree with it, but hey, it is what it is and it happens a lot, right? But yeah, when Megan and him got married, I literally was thinking to myself, like, she's going to have to kind of dial back who she is. And they've been married for nine years, right? So, wow. So there's, so next year would have been 10 years, right? 2022? So that means they've been married since 2012, right? They, they've been married since 2012. Wow. And, you know, so waist deep, that came out of what, like 07, 08? I mean, I know Megan has been in other, I know she's been in movies, but she hasn't taken the roles like she's, you know, the sex kid and the sex pot or stuff you know the sexy girl right she hasn't taken those roles in quite some time but you know both megan and devon they gonna land on their feet you know there'll be men that'll be swooning after megan and i'm pretty sure that there are some women that were in the church that was ready for that they were plotting for that like oh he gonna leave her at some point he's still with her you lying girl he's still with that little floozy because you know how you know how the church people are once again, what did I say? 
judgmental as the fuck. But um, you know, like I said, um, they'll both be good. They'll both be good. I just hope they're not spending the holidays with one another. Hopefully they're not in the same house with each other. Just saying. But that's um it for Megan and Devon. So we're going to move on, you guys, and we're going to talk about the last story, and that'll be it for me. All right, you guys, so next up, we are going to extend a congratulations out to Sean P. Diddy, Puff Daddy, Brother Love, whatever you want to call the nigga, Sean P. Diddy Combs, right? So you guys remember his his famous brand of clothing, Sean John, right? So he won a bidding war this week for Sean John. What was it? Seven point five was seven million dollars, right? I think it was seven point five million dollars, right? So when did he sell the? Damn it! I should have looked that up, right? I remember when he sold the company, and it had it hadn't been that long. It's only been it's not even it's not that long that he sold that company. Um, but yeah, he won a bidding war to get you know get it back. The company that had got Sean John, they are going through bankruptcy, right? So I guess at this point, they're liquidating all their assets, trying to, you know, just get rid of everything under the umbrella of their company. So, like I said, he won the bidding war and Sean John is now back in his possession, right? It is so interesting. When I think about Sean John, Sean John takes me back to my teenage years, right? Because my mom, it's so funny. My mom, back in the day, my mom used to have um, a Spiegel's account. She used to have a Finger Hut account. She used to have an Eddie Bauer account. Like, oh my God. I'm aging myself. Because my mom used to, every year for Christmas, she would buy me toys, but she would also buy me a brand new clothes. So, back in, so in my hometown, in, my, in our mall back in the day, in the 2000s, there was a show, there was a store, an Eddie Bauer store, and um, there was an Eddie Bauer store. So, we would go to Eddie Bauer for Christmas and we would buy me some clothes then when she started moving to the catalogs you know with the catalogs I would um get stuff she would buy me like she bought me some Sean John's one Sean John one year she bought me some Echo I think one year I bought myself some Rockaware like (laughs) it's just my childhood man I just when I think about it man I just go back to the day of being a kid so I'm I'm interested to see what Puff does with, you know, the revamp of Sean John. At one point, I know, because in, JC, in a J.C. Penney in my hometown, they used to have a big section for him with his suits, his Sean John suits. I would, <clears throat> I would actually love it if he does bring back his Sean John suits, because I, will, I, I need me some suits. Like, I definitely need me some suits, and I'll buy some, because his clothes were, I mean, his clothes were always nice, right? But yeah, you guys, congratulations to Puff for, you know, getting back Sean John. And that is all that I got for us this week, you guys. So today is Christmas Eve that I'm filming this. So tomorrow is going to be Christmas. And so there's no video tomorrow. There's no show tomorrow. So I hope that you guys have a wonderful Christmas. Actually, let me take that back because I know not everybody celebrates Christmas, right? So I want to say happy holidays to you and your family, right? I hope you guys have an amazing holiday. Hope you guys are safe. Be safe, you guys, because um, like I said, this COVID, this um, Omarion variant is ramping up. You know, the cases are going up. So definitely, you guys, be safe, be safe, be safe, be safe. That's all I can say to you guys is just be safe because I want you guys to come back and see me again. So if you celebrate Christmas, Kwanzaa, or if you don't celebrate at all, I just hope you guys have a great weekend, a great day great weekend and i will see you guys once again i will see you guys again on um i'll see you guys on monday monday we got two videos to do now i don't know if insecure i believe insecure comes on this sunday but we'll be back for insecure and the series finale of insecure you guys can you guys believe we are at the series finale of insecure man can't believe we're done with insecure so yeah insecure will be sunday well monday and then we'll be back on Monday for Claws. So I got to go watch Claws On Demand, Episodes 1 and 2. I'm not reviewing Episodes 1 and 2. I'll just start up with Episode 3, and we'll go from there, you guys. But um, 
that's it you guys once again be safe you guys enjoy your holidays if you guys don't celebrate the holidays just enjoy your weekend and you know be safe i once again want to reiterate for you guys to be safe out there and i will catch you guys again later on monday 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 so we do this every single week you guys we do this the same time same channel same place and i will catch you guys later so as always you guys stay safe out there take care of yourselves wash your hands wear a mask socially distance be blessed and i'll catch you guys in the next one bye guys actually i'll see you guys for real housewives in miami i think i'm gonna put hot topics up first and then miami will be next i don't know but if you got whichever one you guys see first you see it but bye guys